Hi everyone and welcome. In this video we are going to discuss about transition frequency of a transistor especially MOSFET and its significance in VLSI design especially in analog design. By definition the transition frequency of a transistor is the frequency at which the current gain of the transistor becomes one or unity. So why do we call it transition frequency why can't we call it a unity gain uh, frequency or something like that we call it transition frequency because the transistor from that frequency will act like an attenuator it will transition from an amplifier to an attenuator so we can consider this as an upper bound frequency after which the transistor may not be good enough for our analog design because we want to have we don't want to have an attenuation anywhere in our circuitry until and unless it is absolutely required so let's see and try to derive the equation of transition frequency if you consider this figure uh, on the right uh, you will see that um, there is an NMOS device okay we will derive the equation for NMOS the transition frequency and considering that there are two uh, capacitances CGS between the gate and the source of the uh, transistor the NMOS and there's a capacitance between the gate and the drain of the transistor and we have the input a DC voltage which is VGS the bias voltage and also the VDS um, and we have an AC input which is VGS in sinusoids and uh, you can see that the current IG okay there is no dc current as such as all we know that almost it's almost zero except the leakage because the the gate is um, an insulator or mostly uh, except the tunneling current which is a leakage current we don't have a dc uh, current flowing through it but we will have this ac current which we are going to discuss about now we are going to do the ac analysis so you can uh, neglect these two dc sources because they are ac ground for ac all these sources current and voltage sources the uh, the voltage sources gets shorted so they are ac ground so if you see this vds if it becomes ac ground that means this drain is connected to the ground or this capacitance is connected to the ground which means this capacitor and this capacitor looks like they are in parallel right with that uh, we can try to derive the uh, equation okay these two capacitances are uh, in parallel and the current ig is flowing that through that and the voltage is vgs the the ac voltage so if we want to derive the equation we want to know how what's the relationship between the current and the voltage when there is a pure capacitor right and by the definition of capacitor i don't want to bring all the equations uh, directly so i'm i'll go by the definitions of the simple components which are which is a capacitor here by the definition of capacitor what's a capacitor capacitor is a component it's a physical component or electrical component whose charge is proportional to its voltage right so if you consider that yeah it's coming up so whose charge is q is proportional to its voltage which means here it is um, if you consider a linear time invariant system for a linear system uh, we can introduce a constant called c where q is equal to c times v where q is capacitor that's how we define the capacitor right so if we apply that equation here we will have the q the charge stored um, in both CGD and CGS will be equal to CGS plus CGT times the voltage VGS right and now what we try to do is we will differentiate the equation on both the sides we will get DQ by DT and um, CGT plus CGS is a constant and D VGS by DT where DQ by DT is current right so if we replace the DQ by DT which is going we it, it's just that it is IG the current input current right the gate current so now what we what we want to do is uh, because it's uh, complex and what we want to do is we want to know the frequency so we will go and get it into the frequency domain how do we do that we can we can take laplace transform fourier transform or whatever now we will take the fourier transform the fourier transform of a differentiation function is nothing but j omega times the 
function itself in frequency domain so if you take that into consideration ig of omega the function is converted into the uh, frequency domain ig of omega where omega is 2 pi f which is equal to j omega times cgd plus cgs times vgs of omega okay so now what we want to do is we want to replace the vgs of omega because we know that the drain current which is id is equal to gm times where gm is nothing but the transconductance gm times vgs this is the simple equation from ohm's law and i um, if we replace the vgs by id divided by gm so you you see that the vgs is nothing but id divided by gm and now what we will do is we will uh, take the ratio of id by ig of omega that because why we are doing that because uh, we want to get the current gain right what is the current gain it's the drain current to the gate current which is output current is drain current input current is gate current so we will replace this term here vgs and we will take the id divided by the ig and also we want to um, take just the magnitude of it we don't want the phase of it so if we take the magnitude of it the j goes and we will be left with gm divided by 2 pi f times cgd plus cgs this is the equation that uh, represents the current gain okay now when the f we are showing here becomes ft it is when this id divided by ig the magnitude of this becomes one so if we replace this value one as one then you will get the equation of the transition frequency or transit frequency whatever you call it so gm times gm divided by 2 pi times cgt plus cgs now we try we will try to further simplify this if you see this equation the ft now what we will do here is we will replace the gm by mu n c ox uh, w by l vgs minus vth that is the equation of gm and now also we can consider that cgd is pretty much smaller than cgs okay which is true in case of uh, transistor when it is in saturation cgd this capacitance becomes pretty much smaller than that of cgs in fact those both of these uh, capacitances will have the significant like it's not that significant it will have an impact of miller capacitance as well but still we can make this assumption that um, cgt is pretty much smaller than cgs and making that assumption also we know the equation of cgs is nothing but 2 by 3 um, wl and um, cox taking those two equations uh, our ft becomes like this now if you see this equation we here uh, w and uh, cox gets cancelled with these two and uh, now we will replace this vgs minus vth by vds sat okay saturation we know that vgs minus vth can be equal to vd sat right so in that case our ft the transition frequency becomes equal to three times mu n vd sat divided by 4 pi l square and now this equation is fundamentally very important because you can see that the transition frequency the after the frequency which is critical frequency after which our uh, transistor um, is going to attenuate that frequency is dependent on both the l which is the channel length of the transistor and also vds set right now how can we make it better how can we increase the transition frequency either by decreasing the channel length and or increasing the vds set which both of these have an issue okay if we try to decrease the channel length what happens is the output resistance decreases which will finally reduce the the output swing okay which is not good or if we try to increase the vds set the device will be more sensitive and it will quickly go to triode region which is not good okay so both of these have disadvantages okay if it further reduces because for nowadays we have uh, a seven nanometer five nanometer technology nodes in those cases they are called as uh, short channel um, mosfets so in short channel cases mu n which we are considering here 
is not a constant it reduces with reduction in channel length so if we reduce the channel length the mu n reduces because of the electric field so we can consider mu n by l as a relatively as a constant and if we do that we will um, get this equation which is ft is proportional to vds sat divided by l and also i forgot to tell you that ft of the pmos in, is inherently lesser the transition frequency of the pmos is inherently lesser uh, than that of nmos because of the mobility of the holes is pretty much lesser than the mobility of electrons okay that should be taken into consideration as well now uh, as i said ft is proportional to vds sat divided by l to give you an idea the ft of uh, 180 nanometer technology node which is ranges from between 50 gigahertz to 80 gigahertz now let's discuss about the significance of ft how is it uh, so important in uh, vlsi design or analog uh, vlsi design right so as we know that ft is critical for many high speed analog circuits first and foremost is pll which needs to operate with low jitter from anywhere from 100 megahertz to multi gigahertz range for this uh, pll to operate properly ft of the transistor is plays a critical role now if we decrease the channel length if we scale if we consider the scaling of transistors from 180 nanometer to down uh, what happens is the ft of the transistors goes up okay and also we know that from 65 nanometer to 10 nanometer the ft of the transistor has increased by 3.5 x okay so much it has increased so isn't it a good thing yes it is but it is not truly now we will understand why it is so because of bonding and est protections the parasitic capacitance and uh, the resistances will not decrease or scale down as the technology node scales down so because of this problem the output resistance uh, or the capacitance that the device or the analog circuit sees will not decrease so that will introduce uh, the headroom right so there won't be much of a headroom and that is the reason why uh, nowadays professionals say that the CERDES architecture uh, scaling is pretty much so uh, slow CERDES is a device okay it's a serializer deserializer which is um, a way of communication between the chips maybe it can uh, serialize the data from one chip and again uh, transmit it in uh, either pulse amplitude modulated signal PAM4 or PAM2 or whatever now nowadays it's PAM4 and finally deserialize it on the other other side of the ch uh, chip so what the experienced professionals in analog design say is that uh, 16 or 12 nanometer technology nodes are pretty good uh, compared to the latest or most advanced technology nodes the reason is uh, they are pretty good uh, at speed they, they have better speed compared to 28 nanometer technology or uh, greater than that right so previous generation technology nodes but also at the same time they have good headroom compared to or more headroom compared to that of 5 nanometer technology or below right so because of these two reasons they prefer this uh, technology node for analog design so for analog design everything is important and ft plays a very big role as well right so that's all for now i'll see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching and please do subscribe to my channel and please share the video bye bye